ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We are taking the 40 hadiths in how to gain a successful marriage In our previous chapters we spoke about a um, couple of things So we said remember the is 40 hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu about each one has a headings among a group of them they have headings for example the first chapter we spoke about two hadiths remember and we spoke about fi targhib fi zawaj urging the youngsters and the youths and whoever is not married to get married so and then we moved on to the second chapter in which we spoke spoke about al hadith al waridah fi husn al ikhtiyar a hadith pertaining to choosing the right spouse the right person for you and there we mentioned also two hadiths so we finished four hadiths like that and then we went to the third chapter which was the one we finished last session uh, which we spoke about five ahadiths and that, it, that was al-hadith al-waridah fi al-umur al-lati tasbiqu aqd al-nikah ahadiths pertaining to things um, that happened before marriage five hadiths so five plus four is nine right so we've already dealt with nine narrations of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa which we've got benefits from uh, so inshallah ta'ala now we're going to go to a new chapter this chapter, inshallah ta'ala, is called Al-Hadith Al-Waridah Fi Ma Ba'd Aqd Al-Nikah A hadith pertaining to things that happen after marriage So the person is actually, you know, he, he, he wants to get married which, which was the first chapter And then the second chapter is that he's now chosen the right person And then the third chapter is preparations That he had to come with Now we're talking about after he's got married Or more like this chapter is not only just going to deal with things that are going to happen after marriage but also at the time when the marriage is actually happening so this actually falls in the under fima ba'da aqd nikah okay such as the ceremony and the, the wedding and whatnot we'll be speaking about that inshallah ta'ala so four hadiths will be taken in this inshallah ta'ala the first hadith which will be the tenth hadith but it will be the first hadith for this chapter is the hadith Abu Dawood Ibn Majah al-Tirmidhi narrated on the authority of Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that he said anna al-Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana idha raffa'a al-insana the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was one that if he congratulated okay the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was one that if he congratulated uh, الإنسان إذا تزوج when a person wants to get married if he congratulated them عليه الصلاة والسلام he would say بارك الله لك وبارك عليك وجمع بينكما في خير the messenger would say بارك الله لك may Allah bless you وبارك عليك and may Allah place blessings onto you وجمع بينكما and may Allah تبارك وتعالى bring you both together Fi khayrin in good. This is what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say when he, con when, when he congratulated a person for their marriage, for their wedding. So when we go to weddings and the, and, you know, uh, uh, the sheikh or the wali, the aqd is finished, the girl is married off, the sunnah is to say this dua. The people, they stand up and they greet the brother. Okay, and they say to the brother, Barakallahu lak. May Allah place baraka in this for you. Wa baraka alayk, and may Allah place baraka on it for you. Wa jama'a baynakuma fi khayrin, and may Allah place between the two of you good. The sisters also say the same to the sister. You see, um, this hadith, Ibn Majah and Tirmidhi, and this is the wording of Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, is on the authority of Hassan. Is that an Aqil ibn Abi Talib that Aqil ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu tazawaja he married Imra'atan min bani Jushamin Aqil ibn Abi Talib 
wanted to get married to, he married, sorry, he married a woman from the people of Jushamin. فَدَخَلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقَوْمِ The people entered onto him. When he got married to her, the people came and they all started to congratulate him. And the, the, the regret of him was what? فَقَالُوا They said to him, بِالْرِفَاءِ وَالْبَنِينَ They said, harmony, may Allah bless you with harmony, and may Allah wa ta'ala bless you with, bo with boys, sons, basically. And as you can see, this concept of boys being the thing is a concept that Islam dealt with. Islam dealt with this concept, which is that which one is better, a boy or a girl, for a child, for a parent? Which one, which one brings more reward? The Prophet told us, Ali and the girl brings more reward. And I'm a father. I personally, I'm a father of three girls, and I have three sons personally. And my three daughters, three of my daughters, I seem to get along with them more than I get along with my sons. It's just the compassion and the love that the girls have. They want to know how you're doing. When they, they want to ask you, how are you? Randomly, your daughters would kiss you, hug you. Your son wants to see what's in your hand. He wants to know if you've got chocolate for him, if you've got sweets for him, if you've got toys for him. Ah. Whereas the girl, it's just that compassion and love that she has within her. So this, they, they, they made this dua. They said, بِالْرِفَاءِ harmony wal banina And also, Sons, فَقَالَ the messenger, he said to them, mm -hmm. No, sorry, and Hassan ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib was there, sorry. He said to them, لَا تَقُولُوا ذَلِكَ Hassan said to them, لَا تَقُولُوا ذَلِكَ Don't say that. Uh, he said to them, they said to him, فَمَا نَقُولُوا يَا أَبَى يَزِيدُ Abu Abu Yazid, what should we say? If you, don't, if you don't want us to say that, what should we say? And then he said to them, قُولُوا بَارَكَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Say that. وَبَارَكَ عَلَيْكُمْ Say, بَارَكَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ بَارَكَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَبَارَكَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَجَمْعَ بَيْنَكُمَا وَجَمْعَ بَيْنَكُمَا فِي خَيْرٍ Say that. إِنَّا كَذَلِكَ كُنَّا نُؤْمَرُ We used to be commanded this. So he saw them say this dua, بِالْرِفَاءِ وَالْبَنِينَ But he stopped them from it. And he reminded them not to say that. That we have a prophetic tradition in this, and that is when they, the, when the, the 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 woman and the man get married, the sunnah is to say that dua. But also, that doesn't mean you get rid of the other good characteristics or the good things that the people do, which is also prophetic, and that is al hadiyya lil arus, gifts that people give, and no doubt, everyone who knows knows. The virtue that is in that. And it's as it's narrated in Sahih Muslim, as it's narrated in Sahih Muslim, that Umm Sulaim, the mother of Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Anas ibn Malik is going to narrate this hadith for us. It's on the Senate Tariqa of Al Ja'di Abi Uthman. He said, An Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu from Anas ibn Malik radiallahu And he said, Qala tazawwaja Rasulullah. The messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he married. And who he married here was Zainab bint Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anha. The Prophet married her. So when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa married her, Umm Sulaim, the mother of Anas ibn Malik, he said about his mom, he said, Fasana'at ummi my mother made, Umm Sulaim. Haysan, she made a hais, which is a meal. She made food for them. فَجَعَلَتْهُ فِي تَوْرٍ And she made it in a what? In a tawr. A tawr is an earthened, it's an earthened vessel. It's made of the earth. She, the mother said to, Umm Sulaim said to Anas, Ya Anas, اِذْهَبْ بِهَذَا إِلَىٰ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ She said, take this to the Messenger of Allah, صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ فَقُلْ Say to them, بَعَثَتْ بِهَذَا إليك أمي that my mother sent this out for you. وهي تقرئك السلام and she's giving you her salams. وتقول and she's also saying to you إن هذا لك منا قليلون. This from us is very little. It's insignificant from what you deserve from us. You see how this is a prophetic uh, nurturing. 
the tarbiyah that the Prophet Sallallahu gave the companions, how he nurtured them, to respect him alayhi salatu wasalam. And not only that, Salawatullahi wasalamu alayhi, the way that they knew that they were not able to what? They were not able to fulfill his rights alayhi salatu wasalam and that which he done for them. She said, Inna hadha laka minna qaleel. This is very little that for us to do for you. There's, we haven't fulfilled your rights, our Messenger of Allah. So she said to him, say this to him when you go to him. قال أنس بن مالك إن سلف ذهبت بها إلى رسول الله. I did as my mother told me and I took it to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. فقلت عيسى إن أمي إن أمي my mother تقرئك السلام. She's giving you her greetings. وتقول and she's also saying to you إن هذا منا قليل. And she's also saying to you إن هذا لك منا قليل. That this is very little from us. Like it's nothing. It's worth. It's really worth nothing. The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. What did he say? ضعه. Put it down. The Prophet ﷺ said, put it down. Thumma qala after that, the Prophet said, Idhab go. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Idhab go. Fad'u ila fulanan. Call so and so. Wa fulanan and so and so. Wa fulanan and so and so. Call those people, go and call them. Wa man laqeeta and anyone you meet as well. Don't just stop at those people eh. Whoever else you meet, call them. وَسَمَّ رِجَالًا And the Prophet named a group of men. فُلَانْ 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 And those who are met. فَدَعُوتُ مَنْ سَمَّا I went and I called those people the Prophet told me to call. I called them. وَمَنْ لَقِيتُ Whoever I met on the way, I called them as well. قَالَ قُلْتُ لِأَنَسِرْ وَمَنْ لَقِيتُ الْجَعْدْ أَبُ عُثْمَانِ He said to him, I asked Anas. Anas, the narrator, who narrated from Uthman. He said, I asked him. قُلْتُ لِأَنَسِرْ I said to Anas. كم عدد عدد كم هؤلاء هم how much were they عدد كم كانوا how much were they in number and then he said زهاء ثلاثمائة three hundred men وقال لي رسول الله the messenger said to him him يا أنس هات التوراة bring the earthen vessel فدخلوا they entered onto the Prophet Sallallahu house حتى امتلأت الصفة والحجرة until the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi courtyard and his apartment it got full up it got full فقال رسول الله the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said ليتحلق عشرة عشرة go in the circles of ten and ten ten وليأكل كل إنسان مما يليه every one of you eat from the Closest to him, the place that's closest to him. فَأَكَلُوا they ate حَتَّى شَبِعُوا until they became full. فَخَرَجَتْ طَائِفَةٌ a group a left وَدَخَلَتْ طَائِفَةٌ then another group came in. So it's not just the three hundred, but they were leaving. Another group would come, leave. Another group would come. حَتَّى أَكَلُوا كُلُّهُمْ until everybody ate. فَقَالَ لِيَ أَنَسْ the Prophet ﷺ said to me, Anas, irfa' lift the, the tower, the earthen vessel. Farafa'atu, he said, I, 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 I lifted it. Fama adiri hina wadatu kana akthar am hina rafatu. I don't know. Was it more when I brought it to the Prophet or was it more now that I'm taking it to him after they eat from it? I don't know which one of it. I couldn't assess the amount or the weight of which one was more before when I first brought it. When I initially brought it, or now that it has been eaten from. I don't know which one. And this, of course, is min dala'ilin nubuwati. This was from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, evidences of his prophecy. Alayhi salatu wasalam. But what we're taking from this hadith is what? what? What is it that we take from? We take from this hadith the hadiyah, the gift that is given also to gift a person. And it's very important. When you're gifting a person who got married, a lot of the times what happens is people tend to gift what generally a lot of people are already going to give. Does that make sense? So when you're giving a gift, try to, be make, try to make sure that you bring other things that you, you, you think probably other people may not bring. Okay? For example, a lot of the times people bring, huh? They bring bed sheets or uh, they bring vessels and just like when the child is born as well, people all bring you clothes of the baby. 
So you end up with what? Extra, ex too much clothing. Does that make sense? So if you could try to get things other than that which is brought for the person. Especially it's good to know the wada and the situation of the person uh, and the things that... So that's the hadith um, we've taken uh, for this chapter, the first hadith for this chapter. So now inshallah ta'ala the 11th hadith is women playing the daf uh, on the wedding day. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha annaha zaffat imra'atan ila rajul min al-ansar faqala al-nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya Aisha ma kana ma'akum lahun fa inna al-ansar yu'jibuhum lahu. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Oh Aisha, because Anna Zafat, Aisha prepared a mara'atan, a woman, ila rajulun min al-ansari for a man of the people of Ansar. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she prepared um, the groom, right? For the bride. The bride for the groom. Ah. Aisha radiallahu anha, she prepared the bride for the groom. فَقَالَ نَبِيُّ اللَّهِ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ya Aisha, O oh Aisha, مَا كَانَ مَعَكُمْ لَهُون There was no amusement, there was no lahwi done, which is what? A daf and enjoyment, was it not done? فَإِنَّ الْأَنصَارَ يُعْجِبُهُمُ اللَّهُ Because the people of Ansar, it amazes them, lahu. They like it. And Imam Al-Bukhari brought it in his Sahih. So this hadith is an evidence that the women are allowed to play the uh, sorry the deaf. They're allowed to play the deaf on the wedding. And they're also allowed to sing with their mouths with words that are good. But it has to be There can't be no men around amongst themselves. There's no problem. If they play their deaf, and they sing words that don't have munkar or fahisha or evil stuff, then there's a nas and evidence for it. There's evidence for it. They play their deaf, you see, and they sing there. Well, the people I'm from, my Som the Somalian people I'm from, I'm the Somalis. What we do is we have a we have a uh, a thing that we do. We call it the barambur. We call it barambur. And what the women do is they uh, they boast and they brag the tribes that the girls from and the boys from. And it's mentioning of the tribes and whatnot. There's no problem in that. As long as there's no slandering of each other's tribes, as long as there's no munkar evil being mentioned, no problem. You see? This is permissible. Arabs used to do it. This is an Arab practice, by the way. There's no problem and there's no rights for an individual to prevent the woman from doing this. Lakin, they're not allowed to say things that are filthy, things that are vulgar. They are not allowed to bring uh, musicians and rappers and artists. They are not also allowed to bring instrumental, huh? musical instrument, instruments. They can't bring beats and basses and huh? violins and pianos. لا. What is permissible is textual. إنما هو الدف. Duff is allowed. Anything outside that requires an evidence. And they are also allowed to sing. As for taking this ruling of the specification and try to generalize it is actually ignorance of the Sharia. The Sharia ah has the rights, the Sharia, ah, Allah Tabaraku Ta'ala has the rights to prohibit things in, an, in other places and he's, a, he's got the rights to what? Permit it somewhere. Sahih. Allah is the one who permitted it, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the woman to pray the deaf in the, uh, when they're in the wedding day. But he is the one who prohibited it from the men. Sahih. And the fact that Allah permitted it them, for them here is not a evidence for elsewhere. Is it a, a permissible elsewhere? No, it's not permissible. 
ولذلك the one who listens to music or likes music or needs to remember that the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sultani mal'unani two voices are cursed the prophet is saying this to you alayhi salatu wasalam the cursed sawtun a voice when the person is going through hardship the wailing and the, the noise that the person makes and shouting and screaming and whatnot and the sound that the person makes when he is enjoying himself listening to music yeah Allah says in the Quran وَاسْتَفْزِزْ مَنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِصَوْتِكَ وَأَجْلِبْ عَلَيْهِمْ بِخَيْلِكَ وَرَجْلِكَ وَشَارِكُمْ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ وَعِدْهُمْ وَمَا يَعِدْهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا وَاسْتَفْزِزْ مَنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِصَوْتِكَ صوت هي the sound of shaytan also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam scholars they differ on in the authenticity of this some only يُصَحِّحُونَهُ وَقْفًا they say it's sahih mawqufan wa la yasihu marfu'an. Some scholars they say that. They stop it at the call of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Inna al-ghina yunbitu fil qalbi al-nifaq. That music, it places in the heart hypocrisy. If you look at the people today who fall off their religion, if you look at them, ask them, those people who have low iman, those people who have depression, those people who have anxieties, those, 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 go on. This is where it comes from. وَلِذَلِكَ ibn al-Qayyim alayhi rahmatullah Ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah have mercy upon him, he mentions that zina, liwat, homosexuality, all of that he says, the, the cause, root, the root cause for it is music. If you watch the kitab, if you read the kitab, إِغَاثَةُ الْلَهْفَانِ فِي مَصَايِدِ الشَّيْطَانِ It's the root cause for it. The person is listening to music, now, I'm going to say to you brothers, a I'm going to ask you guys a question. Ibn al-Qayyim's music and the lyrics of those music, is it, how is it compared to this today's one? Like, Sahih? It's different. Even now, if you look at the Arab world, and you look at the Western world, the music is, subhanAllah, they st the Arab world still, the Arab world is still better than the that doesn't mean that that's permissible, this is haram. What I mean is, if he, at that time, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is saying, Al-ghina yunbitu nifaqa fil qalbi, it places hypocrisy in the art. And it also what? Now, Allah, I pondered here, yeah, I thought about this. Pay attention, that it places hypocrisy in the heart, right? People who, who sing today, look at them, they pretend to be what they're not. Isn't that hypocrisy? Hypocrisy. They become, they show their flashy cars. They don't have it, it's not theirs, they rented the car. Sahih? Yeah. They, they, they boast that I'm, that I'm tough, I'm rough. Yeah, a lot of them, they cry in interviews like they get scared. Huh? They're not as strong as they portray themselves to be. Sahih? Some of, they get, some of them get pranked and he was a big man. Yeah. And then he is crying. The big, big, strong rapper. You see? So it's nifaq, it's hypocrisy. They live in that, they live that life, that double life. The, because the paparazzi is running after them and whatnot. Ala kulli hal, the qawl of the sahabi, qawl of this uh, sahabi al-jaleel, Abdullah ibn Abbas shows you the quwa, right? Also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi statement, وَلَيَنزِلَنَّ أَقْوَامٌ إِلَىٰ جَنْبِ عَلَمٍ يَرُوحُ عَلَيْهِ مِسَارِحَةِ لَهُمْ فَيَقُولُ اُتِنَا غَدًا فَيُبَيِّتُهُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَجْعَلُهُمُ الْقِرَدَةَ وَالْخَنَازِيرَ That Allah turns and deforms them into monkeys and pigs. Isn't that something? If you look at them today, look at the way they move their hands. You see the way they jump around. Allah changed their form. You see, into pigs and monkeys. They make noises like animals. إِنَّا لِلَّهُ وَإِنَّا لَا رَجْعُونَ But what we... What we're trying to point out here, and that was just the last of me going off topic, is that women are permitted and they are allowed. Darbu dafi, they are allowed to use daf. As for anything outside that, there's no permissible, there's no permissibility for them. And the sharra, 
the Sharia, what he permitted, we, we permit. What he doesn't permit, we don't. The asal is that it's haram, and this time is an istithna, an exception, and they're allowed to. And they're also even allowed to sing. They're allowed to sing with wordings that don't consist in it. Fi ma'azin anil rijal. Words that don't have ithm in it, and it has to be fi ma'azin anil rijal. No men have to be there. Now, wallahi, what's shocking is that a lot of the times you see weddings that are free mixed. Free mixing, صحيح? Free mixing. Men and women. And this man is getting married to this sister. He's doing this. You see? He starts his life off. He starts his life off. His marriage, his, he starts it off with munkar. And then, when the people make the dua for him, Barakallahu lak, wa barakallahu alayk, wa jama'a baynakuma fi khayrin. I say to Allah, you disobeyed Allah in the beginning stage of your, your life. You see? So it's very, it's very dangerous. And then what's even more sad is those who fight for it, who champion for it. I'm going to make sure this, marriage, this wedding is actually a free mix. Sing, free mix. The girl saying no, the brother saying no because they're practicing. But then somehow his sisters and brothers, they basically overtake and they do it. على كل حال فاتقوا الله في الله تبارك وتعالى. Bringing men and women together, bringing musicians and rappers and, and singers to stage. This is from the munkarat that has spread. إن لله وإن إلى رجعون. And you know what's sad, really, truly to be said, is that when the people disobey Allah تبارك وتعالى, and they say that the religion has been that it's been said, it's made, it's made too hard and it's. And that these people are being tough on them. And they disobey Allah wa ta'ala. The effect hits their marriage. And this person you thought was being harsh on you and was being too tough on you, you were rough. Wasn't he better for you now to save your marriage? Wouldn't it, would it, is it not better to save your marriage to at least listen to this tough person you call, this haram police that you call this person? He's the one who truly is caring about you. Because he's going to save your marriage by giving you this sincere advice. But to say, I just want to enjoy myself. What's the benefit of a joy comes after it? A, a problem, headache, hardship. Naam. So sins have an effect. They have a direct effect in, the, in our lifestyle. They have a direct effect in the things about our life. May Allah forgive us. That which is apparent. And may Allah forgive us for that which is hidden, that's not known.